one. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our righteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. Let us pray to the Lord. 
You have appointed your son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let me see. The Old Testament lesson appointed for Christ the King Sunday is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. And I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord. Yes, be to God. This lesson is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ, the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him. That God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. We turn in our window to page 156. We stand as we sing Alleluia to hear the word of the God. Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. 
And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now can confess our Christian faith together in one voice as we speak the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is on page 158. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, Well, good morning, everyone. How are you all today? Hey, today is Christ the King Sunday. Hey, what do you know about a king? What do you know, Mr. White, about a king? They help people? Okay. They're rich? What else? What do you guys know about a king? Oh, kings and queens. What do you know about a king? They have a crown. Are kings rich? Yes. Can kings do whatever they want? You know why? Because they're going to king. They can do whatever they want. Oh, yeah. So kings, are, are they pretty important people? Yeah. Well, today... We are focusing on Christ as king. Okay? So, uh, so kings can do whatever they want, right? Even if, if, if a king wants your favorite toy, can you try to take it? Yeah, because he's the king. But today, we see Jesus as king. And you know, Jesus as king does only things out of love for you. So Jesus is only going to do what is best for you. So Jesus is going to rule the best way, better than any king on earth. Because he went to the cross and he died for all of your sins. And God rose him from the dead. 
And he ascended into heaven, and he sits up in heaven on a what? Ladder. A big chair. What's a big chair called? A throne. Because he is the king. Because he did God's love for all of us at the cross and the empty tomb. And he'll come again as the king. But a good king. And do what is best for us. So let's say a prayer. Everyone, let's say a prayer. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for being our king. For loving us. For dying for us. For rising again. And we pray that you will come again. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. I'm all out of candy today. I'm sorry. But you got to go back to your seats. <laughs> go back. We sing here in 644 and 644. <laughs>
and our reading would uh, end. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, from the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, how many of you would like to have a king as the ruler of our country? You know, let's uh, abolish the three branches of government that we have, and let's enthrone a king. Anyone? Crickets. That's a good thing. Now, and I'm not talking about the constitutional monarchies that they have now in Europe. No, I'm talking about straight up pre-French Revolution royalty over us poor peasant people. You know, of course we don't want that. We know where that leads. We've seen it plowed in history. There's a reason the King of France lost his head. Absolute control produces absolute corruption. If the king wants your back 40 acres for his personal hunting ground, guess what? You lost 40 acres of farmland. If the king thinks your daughter is strikingly beautiful, she just might have, end up living in the king's house. There are good reasons why there are very few true monarchies left in the world today. So sure, we don't want a king ruling over us. But you know what? We all have the desire within us to be a king for ourselves. Now, I'm a, child, I'm a child of the 90s, so as I was reading and writing this sermon, I immediately thought of the movie The Lion King, which I saw in theaters. And the, and the song in there, I just can't wait to be king. <clears throat> so we don't want a king. But who wouldn't love to have the power and the control and the wealth and the lavish lifestyle of royalty? Now, I'm pretty sure and safe in saying, however, that none of us are ever going to be royalty. But it's fun to think about living in a castle, getting to eat whatever food you want. You need to do whatever you want without repercussion. Because the desire is still there in all of our hearts. In fact, our sins and our sinful nature actually cause us to act like kings. Sin is always self-serving. Sin always wants to have its own way. Sin does not care about the needs or wants of people around us. In a way, when we sin against someone, we are acting out the desire within us that we just can't wait to be king over them. I'll give you an example. When we're speeding recklessly down the highway, I know none of you do this. I certainly don't do it. But when we're speeding recklessly down the highway, passing this car, and next, we are acting as king over other people on the road. Because our time and our desires come before their safety. Or when we speak badly about other people, we are acting out our inbred desire to be their king by making them less and making ourselves more. And we can do this. We can see this with every single sin that we are afflicted with. So again, we say we would never want a king to rule over us. And 
yet in our sin, we act as kings over those we sin against. Now, the, the wanting and the despising of kings can be found throughout the scriptures. It can be found all throughout the scriptures. Now, uh, so we have studied in our Bible class the book of Judges. And in the book of Judges, we've got to a point, it's, it's kind of a head-butting point, where the people of Israel don't have a king and they want one. You see, God's chosen people, Israel, they had been redeemed from slavery in Egypt. They got their wilderness wandering over and done with. God gives them the promised land and says, go and kick out all the people that are living there. But they don't do it. And then, in the book of Judges, the Israelites look around them, and they see all of their fellow countrymen, or, or countries around them, all the people groups around them, and they all have great and mighty kings, and Israel says, well, I want one of them. And God says, you don't know what you're asking for. God did not give them a king, though, in the book of Judges. He gave them temporary rulers who had, all of them had character flaws that pointed out that they're not the true king. And yet in them God was pointing to a king that he would send his people eventually. Well, Israel finally did get a king. It wasn't a very good one. It was King Saul. But it wasn't until King David that God's people really got the closest thing to a perfect king that there could have been. David defeated Goliath. David united the northern and the southern kingdom to be one nation, Israel. David defeated tens of thousands of enemies. But David, too, was not the perfect king. Now, you know the story of David and Bathsheba. One of the kids there said, David stole someone's wife. He did. And he killed her husband. David's son didn't hold up any better either. King Solomon had many wives, a lot of them foreign, and he had 400 concubines. These are not the perfect kings that God would have for his people. Now, this history of Israel and her kings is a spiral downward to the point of being in exile in a foreign land under the thumb of a foreign king, defeated and discouraged. But even there, however, through the prophets, God promised his people yet another and perfect king. And that's just what we got. See, God's timing didn't follow Israel's wants and desires. Even when God did send his ultimate greatest king, he too was not what Israel had expected, nor what they wanted. They wanted a king to kick Rome's butt. Get Rome out of there. It's not what they got. The ultimate king God gave his people is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the perfect king. In the flesh, he is a descendant of Adam and Noah and Abraham and David. But when he arrived, Israel did not see a king. 
They saw a poor family that had to have their firstborn child in a barn. As Jesus grew and as he began teaching with authority, Israel even did not see a king. They see a man who's going to upset the status quo and mess everything up for their religious system. When Jesus began healing the sick, raising the dead, doing all of his miracles recorded in the scriptures, Israel even then did not see a king. Rather, they charged him as being from Beelzebub, being from Satan. And all this build up with Israel and the king that God sent them finds its climax in what we heard in our gospel lesson from Matthew 27. I'll read that again. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion before him and they stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him and twisting a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his hand and kneeling before him, they mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Oh, the irony here. All this was done in mockery by the Romans. Because the Jews didn't want it. The Jews wanted a king who would kick out the Romans, not a king who would be killed by the Romans. And this even continues on the cross where they nailed a sign above Jesus' head that says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Israel hated that. The Jews hated that. He said, this guy is not our king. We have no king but Caesar. They cry out. Put up there. This man claimed to be king. Here I'll carve it in a wood and I'll nail it up there myself. This man came to claim to be the king of the Jews. Dear friends of Christ, at the cross, behold your king. Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Son of God, there at his passion and his death, we see our king suffering and dying for all of our sins, the sins that make us want to be king you know, of our own worlds. At the cross, we see exactly what kind of king God has sent his people. <coughs> Jesus isn't a king who is only out for himself. Jesus isn't a king interested in power or wealth or control or the lavish lifestyle. Even when Jesus was welcomed into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna, he came in not riding a stately white horse like a king should. Rather, he was on a donkey, a beast of burden. Because Jesus is the humble king. Jesus is the king who does not look out for his own interests, but thinks of each and every one of you and what he can do for you in the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus is the sacrificial king dying to save his people. But that isn't the only picture that the scriptures give us of the King Jesus, especially on this Christ, the King Sunday. And those are highly important actions for King Jesus to do in his passion and his death. But we want to see this King who cares so much about us 
We want to see him in power and in glory. And that is exactly what we see as Christ emerges from the empty tomb. In his resurrection, he utterly conquered sin and death. That's often why the resurrection, when it is pictured, you see Jesus coming out from the empty tomb. And he has a big giant pole. And on that pole is a white flag fluttering in the wind and it has a red cross on it. That is the victory banner. That is the victory flag. The flag that our king won when he rose from the dead. We then see our king ascend into heaven. He doesn't die again. He defeated death. So he simply ascends back from the place where he came. The big giant chair, one of the kids said. The throne of God at his right hand. And on this Christ the King Sunday, dear friends in Christ, see and hold dear all the things that King Jesus has done out of love for you. Because that is all from the love of God. But know too that the King will return. And since the king has already acted out of grace and mercy and love and sacrifice for you, we know that we need not fear the king's coming again. So I want to end by quoting a hymn as we live our lives under the reign of King Jesus. We remember this. When faced, on when faced with trials on every side, we know the outcome is secure, and Christ will have the prize for which he died, an inheritance of nations. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even to life everlasting. Amen. We now take a moment to worship our God with our time. <laughs>
continues with our prayers. In addition to our prayers listed, we uh, remember the family and loved ones of Doris Ulrich. Uh, Doris is the, the sister of Armin Meyer. She was called home to her eternal glory this past week. So we pray for Armin's family and Doris's family as well. I'll conclude each of our prayers by saying, Lord, in your mercy. Congregation responds by saying, hear our prayer. So please stand as we pray to our God. Lord God, you gather your people from all nations and bring them into your one holy Christian and apostolic flock. Strengthen them by your grace, that they may gladly feast upon your riches in your means of grace. And declare your praises to all who will hear. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have subjected all things under your Son, who gladly subjects himself to you. Bless the homes of your people, that parents may train and catechize their children with wisdom and love, and that children may gladly submit and honor their fathers and mothers. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, we look forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. While now we contend with a multitude of afflictions under the curse of sin, remember those in need of help and healing. We have looked to your care among us, especially Tom, Elsie, Gail, Marilyn, Corrine, Ethelene, Carolyn, Marvin, Pat, Gabe, Jennifer, Russell, Bill, Jamie, Cody, Delaney, Landon, Russ, Loretta, and the family and loved ones of Doris. Preserve them, deliver, deliver them from their transgressions, and hold not your peace at their tears. Lord, in your mercy, <coughs> God of grace, as death came by a man, so by your Son has come the resurrection of the dead. Endow your people with penitent hearts here at your table, that they would receive in your risen Son's body and blood a foretaste of the eternal feast to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you have prepared your kingdom for us from the foundations of the world. Preserve us in faith and love throughout our days, that we may care for your servants and our neighbors with compassion and joy looking toward that day when the Son of Man comes in his glory, to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Service continues on page 160, page 160. So we begin the service of the sacrament. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you.
for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen <coughs> us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. <coughs> Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, your Son, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. strengthen and preserve you, both body and soul in the one true thing, even until I come to rest. He parted his peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table.
We sing Thank the Lord. We stand as we sing. Crowning with many crowns. 